Good morning. It's uh, August the 29th. Yes, 29th. <coughs> it's a Monday, so that means we're going on the, along the creek. As usual, it's fairly cool this morning. It was 11 when I got up. Probably a degree or two warmer than that now. So we're starting to feel that morning chill. Another sign of oncoming winter, autumn first, and then winter. Sorry I didn't walk over the weekend. I would have walked yesterday, but it rained. Saturdays I often miss because of all the errands we run. Um, yesterday I had plans to walk from the Science Center home because we ate lunch at uh, our brunch at Crave over there. Uh, not Crave. Used to be, <laughs> it used to be called Zest. It's never been called Crave. Crave is downtown. Uh, it's called Sky, Sky Bistro. And uh, it was raining, so I didn't because I didn't want to be wet. I didn't have an umbrella and I just didn't want to do that. So, no walking yesterday. So I missed a day that I normally would have walked. But I'm back today and uh, should do better this week. I have a uh, couple of places I have to go, which will influence the walks and get me out of the neighborhood. Editing continues on various things, writing. I wrote two-thirds of my short story for Shapers of Worlds, Volume 3. Last story to come in will be mine. Um, probably won't finish it today, but I should finish it tomorrow. I have to interview somebody for the podcast this afternoon. Good morning, Kirk in Vancouver. Uh, so yeah, work, work, work. Quite a few publishing things. I've now got uh, the Amir's Falcon and Thickwood, my fall releases. Oh, hello, squirrel. Um, that's unfortunate timing. Are now available for pre order on Amazon if you want to go looking. The Amir's Falcon by Matt Hughes and Thickwood by Gail M. Smith. The former is a young adult outdoor adventure tale set in. Swan Hills of Alberta, and the latter is a post-Second World War historical novel set in Saskatchewan, about a young woman who wants to raise horses in the Thickwood Hills where she grew up, and she's just come back from playing in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. So I've actually sent a copy of that book to the communications director for the All-American Professional Girls Baseball League. And uh, we'll see. Maybe they'll, she'll promote it to members and pick up some sales that way. That'd be cool. The Amir's Falcon will officially release on September 27th. And uh, Thickwood will release on October 20, no, October 4th, I guess, is the plan. Must be doing something in here because there's a big Loras. You can see it's a beautiful blue sunny day, cloudless, nice and cool for walking, that's for sure. When do we find our first dog? Oh, look, Terry Fox Run coming up on September 18th. Good morning, Tracy. Yes, it is a beautiful day. Here's our first dog. That didn't take long. <laughs> well, this house is all boarded up. Either renovating or it's coming down. I just noticed that. Morning. Getting more and more yellow leaves showing up in trees. Oh, 
Oh, I see some sort of fruit. Oh, whatever that is. Lots of seed pods on the trees too. Sometimes that looks like the leaves are changing and it's just seed pods. But I think today's walk will be just one of my standard walks along the creek. So I can get back and get out all the stuff I want to do today. Be down at the south end probably one day this week, maybe tomorrow. So I'll walk while I'm down there doing that. And I need to go over into Whitmore Park area as well. That'll be a fairly long walk if I do that one if I start from here, which is my current thinking. And uh, might head out to Wascana Golf Club where I've often gone to work but haven't this summer because I haven't had a car because of my daughter being home. But if Polytechnic, that's always pop popular because there are people who are planning to attend school there and they're always interested to see what it looks like. Same as when I walk around the university, I always seem to get more hits on those videos. Looking east into the sun. And looking west. A little bit of a breeze blowing from the west, making it a bit chilly. I'm still in full summer mode dress-wise. Short sleeves and shorts. You saw me? Yeah, I'm fairly... I do... Uh, I'm easy to spot <laughs> if you're looking for me. <laughs> I don't see anybody else doing this. I'm the only one walking around holding one of these things. <clears throat> Had a guy in Central Park on Friday. Was it Friday? Thursday? Whenever it was. I wanted to know who I was filming for. I pointed the camera right at him, and actually when I went back and reviewed the uh, video, he wasn't on the camera. Nobody would have known he was anywhere near if he hadn't spoken up. <coughs> he was never showed up on camera. He seemed concerned about it. You always wonder, yeah, really, what have you done that you're worried about having your picture seen in public? A little dog. seed pods on that tree over there. There's a guy that uh, I've run into once that seemed to ride around on his bicycle and do it. And uh, I think there's a guy that drives around sometimes. But I think I'm the only one doing walks. Not that I've really looked. It's not like I've been searching to see if there's others. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm glad people watch it. And I have over 500 subscribers now. So if I get to a thousand, I could even make money, but that's still a long way away. As I keep saying, it's mostly so I get some exercise. I will not walk down through the grass today. I suspect it's heavily dude. Dude. The grass is dude, dude. You get your feet wet in the dude grass, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I can see moisture glinting out in the sun. <coughs> so I won't walk down over there. It 
stick to the path today. They really need to repaint this sign. Just get graffitied again, of course, because we are plagued with the kind of crummy people who do that sort of thing, but still, this side it's still okay. So they figure that's good enough for the time being. Berries on the trees, are the bushes there still? I presume people have been playing baseball this summer. I'm never over here when they're doing it, but one presumes these parks are used on a regular basis. I like the horseshoe pitch up here. I walk, walk by every week and have only once seen anybody playing horseshoes on it. But presumably more is done in that regard than I am seeing. Oh, let's go down here just to be different. Walk to the parking lot here. Get a different look at the park, the baseball diamond. There's one there, and there's one over there. Did rain, as I said, so there's uh, damp ground in here. Oh, they're actually watering over there, so maybe I will go this way and stick to the sidewalk. I thought I could just walk through the grass there, but then of course the grass is wet and there's sprinklers going, so we'll go this way instead. I just don't understand the impulse to graffiti things. I don't understand why you want to vandalize other people's property. I could make up reasons, but I don't really buy them. I could write a character who had a good reason to do it, for sure. <laughs> I can write characters who could justify all sorts of horrible behavior. Doesn't mean I buy it myself as the author. But I can sort of understand the motivation, but I don't approve of it. I think it really makes sense. I have a very horrible character in my new book. Eric Galioto is his name. Kind of an outer system crime lord. He does horrible things. I see a guy wear a... Cowboy hat, the military tunic, that's you. Oh, well, I will, uh, I'll try to keep that in mind. Should I see such a person? And hopefully there's not two of you, or two people that do that. See, that's why I didn't want to walk that way, the grass. There's a fellow in Weyburn you could never overlook. He wore a pith helmet. <laughs> he was the... Also, he was a perennial political candidate. Social credit, which was had a brief fling in the 30s, but was really a fringe at the time. We got to the 80s when I was at the Weyburn Review. He would get like, he would run for MLA and get so few votes you could count them on the fingers of one hand. But at least he put his hat in the ring.
his pith helmet in the ring. <laughs> I don't know why he wore a pith helmet. I never talked to him to find out. But he was uh, always recognizable because of it. See, people do that at science fiction conventions. They'll have kind of... Authors will have something that they wear <laughs> that has become their convention uniform so that they're always recognizable. <laughs> okay. I'll try to remember that if I ever happen to run into you. <laughs> Lee Modisett Jr., well-known science fiction writer, always wears a very colorful vest at science fiction conventions. Rob Sawyer tends to wear Hawaiian shirts. I don't have a uniform. I should wear a Rough Rider jersey. That would be what would set me apart from the other science fiction writers. I'm going to a convention in October in Ottawa, CanCon, because the timing is perfect for the release of my next novel from Daw, The Tangled Stars, and also ties in pretty well with the release, upcoming release of Shapers of Worlds Volume 3. Hi, honey. <laughs> it's not my wife, it's somebody who calls herself, or himself, honey. Lovely, lovely morning. I was thinking I'd walk through the grass up here, but again, with the uh, dew on the grass, I don't think I will. I'll stick to the path today. Yeah, 505 subscribers last time I looked, so it's going up fairly steadily. If I get to a thousand, I can potentially make money if I've also got enough viewer hours. I don't remember the exact numbers for that. But yeah, tell your friends, subscribe to my channel. It was only 40 when I started back in March of 2021. So, if it kept going the way it is, I could reach 1,000 next year sometime. So I guess I better keep walking. Walking, walking, walking. Hello, pigeons. All right, another look to the east on the creek. Ooh, and again, the sun is very bright. And to the west. Say hello to the pigeons. Will they fly away or will they just sit there going coo? There goes one, there goes the other one. Oh, hippie carriage. There should be a... I keep saying I'll put out a bingo card. You know, do a bingo every walk and you get a free ebook if you... <laughs> If you get bingo. I have to send you a copy of the card though. It's tempting. Wouldn't be that hard to do. Put it on my website. Oh look, it's a dog convention. Dog owner convention anyway. Yeah, pretty much walking the entire path. We're dogs. Come on. Morning. Morning. They're not cats. Uh, Katie's put everything. Yeah. Mm, Gotta be what you said there.
Really? Why precisely? What were you... What was so popular all of a sudden? My most popular walks have been, well, in St. John's, <laughs> not here, and uh, snowstorms. People like snowstorms. Sometimes I don't know until I look back that I realize some particular video has gotten thousands rather than hundreds of views. Or tens of views is even more likely for a typical walk. But of course people keep finding them so I don't always know that uh, walks from the past have picked up a lot more viewers. It's a real dog morning here. Not like I do anything to promote it, except I mention it on my podcast and mention it when I'm doing presentations or something, but I haven't made any concerted effort to promote it. Its growth has been organic, as they say. interesting to see as it gets colder if my microphone quit works working again as it did in cold weather last year. I presume it will. My theory was that it, uh, although I guess I've got a new phone since last winter. Didn't I get this one in the, yeah. Or did I? No, I got this last fall, so no, it was this I think. Anyway, my working theory was that as it got cold, the uh, plug-in part of the microphone contracted more than the plug on the phone did. And as a result, it was losing connection and would disconnect. And I don't know of any way to stop that from happening. So we'll see if it happens again this winter. It drove me crazy for a while. I thought it had something to do with the wireless mic. Well, the wireless mic, probably it did somewhat, because last time I used the wireless mic in beautiful weather, it disconnected halfway through for no apparent reason. So my cheap little wired mic here, which is it's slightly annoying to have the cable dangling, keeps working, so that's what I've stuck with. And the expensive wireless mic, I'm sure I'll have a use for it at some point. I was recording something else, but for the walks, it doesn't seem to be the ideal. Oh well. That's why I better monetize this at some point just to pay for that. <laughs> Failed experiment. And the vagaries of the walkway bring us back to the creek at this point. Briefly. Then we will leave it momentarily and rejoin it on the northern dike after we've gone back across Elphinstone. There's the creek. As I said last time I walked along here, there's a spot where you can go right down to the water and in the winter even onto the ice and that's a lot closer to now and it might look at the moment. And no, I don't know why I'm suddenly using this Texas accent. Just my roots coming through. Sort of like when you dye your hair blonde and the dark roots start appearing. My southern roots are never that far away. Here's the spot. Here's the spot of which I was thinking. Shall we just change? I could step right into the water, but I won't. And there's the Pasqua Street Bridge. The creek. And in that direction, more creek. Oddly enough, tends to go. Which way is it flowing? It's flowing left to right, as you can tell by the raging current. You can't tell it's moving at all. If there was a leaf or something in the middle, you might see it moving, but otherwise it looks placid. 
Creek Placid rather than Lake Placid. Yes, this is a stream of consciousness <laughs> vlog. How did you guess? There's the bridge, the archie bows. We're going this way. I will walk through this bit of grass, hopefully. The path here is actually overgrown green with weeds, even though it's be beaten down regularly by people walking along it. Another function of the fact it's been quite a wet summer. The fact there's this much grass, I mean, this much green and like unwatered grass like that over there. Sure sign that we've had more rain than some years. There's Sask Express building over there, used to be a school. <clears throat> this is Pasco Street we're on now. Walk down the sidewalk on the north side of the park here momentarily. cloud in the sky. If you're going to see any, you'd see it over there in the west, but it's clearless to the clearless. It's clear to the horizon. Cloudless and clear, not clearless. Not sure what clearless would mean. The thing is clear or is it or it is not clear. Clearless this doesn't mean anything. We'll turn down 15th Avenue here. My old jogging path. Two years ago, I was jogging before I started walking and live streaming and uh, while I was impressed with myself for being able to jog <laughs> not being something I have done often I quickly discovered my knees didn't like it so I would jog and then my knees would be stiff and unhappy and so I wouldn't be able to do anything for a while and I realized that was counterproductive whereas I could walk indefinitely so I began the walking and Live streaming came along because of watching a uh, live streamer in Manhattan called Walking Commuter, whom I still recommend. We don't watch him as often as we used to, but he's there. Gabe is his real name, I don't know his last name. And uh, he was live streaming his walks, and I thought, hey, I could do that. And I did some research, and here I am. I'm using software called Prism. If you watch to the end of the recording, you'll see it says created with Prism Live Studio. And the reason I'm using that is because it allows you to live stream to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Um, you know, I know what I'll do. I'll take down this, I'll go down this little bit. It'll mean a bit of a repeat, but then I will leave it again. I don't very often walk on this piece of the uh, path, so let's do it t today. What is that up ahead? Oh, I know. It's a, I just haven't come this angle before. It's a par it's the park bench with a garbage receptacle in front of it from this angle. I thought it was somebody bending down by a baby stroller. Up here, we will rejoin the path I've already followed, but we'll just take it back around to the playground and then leave it again. Just wasn't used to seeing 
those two things from that direction, so my brain was trying to make sense of it. All right, so this is a repeat of the stretch of the path, but now walking the other way. But before we get to the footbridge, I will leave it again. streaming it on Facebook and just streaming it on YouTube because then I could stream it at higher definition provided the data allowed me to but I do have people who only watch me on Facebook so I don't want to abandon them so I think I will keep doing it this way 720 at least is less likely to buffer it's not, looks fine if you're watching it on the small screen. If you blow it up to TV size, it might not look as high def as you'd like, but I post it, I post the recording at 1080, so it's a bit higher def. That's one reason I do that. Also, the recording has no buffering, so if there was a buffering problem, which there used to be more of when I first started doing it, um, That eliminates that. Always thinking of my audience and apologizing for the fact my horizon is currently angled. Don't know why it does that. Not sure how the software makes those determinations. Now, I will stick to the path again because of the dew on the grass. You can see it sparkling there if you look. Sparkling in the sun. So up here at the turtle, <laughs> we'll turn left. <laughs> turn left at the turtle. It's a painted turtle, but not a actual painted turtle, which is an actual species of turtle. Or rather, it is an actual painted turtle and not a turtle that is called a painted turtle. It's a stone turtle that has been painted. There she blows directly ahead. At least I assume it's not a real turtle. If it is, it's a really slow moving one because it's always in the same spot. There. Those giant tortoises, or a sea turtle to be that big. Okay, here's the footbridge, but we're not going over it. We're going to, I will take a brief shortcut through the wet grass and zigzag this way now. Up by the playground. Right here. And since there's no kids on it, I will go into the playground. not spent nearly as much time in playgrounds in the last 10 or 12 years as I did in the years before that when Alice was of an age to always want to stop at playground. I would have loved a playground like this when I was a kid. I was excited if I saw a spiral slide which I have a clear memory of some park in Texas that we went to for a Easter hunt, Easter egg hunt, how much I enjoyed that. And I remember how the park had a spiral slide and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Okay, back onto the pavement. Now we'll go by the Neil Buckwell Civic Arts Center here on my right. There's the giant beaver, a centennial project. Somebody researched it for me while I was walking one day, one of my Facebook followers, so again, wouldn't want to cut those people off. So yeah, this is the Neil Balkwell Civic Art Center. You can take art classes there.
This isn't the main entrance. This is the handicapped entrance. I'll have to go through the wet grass again. But oh well. Anyway, there's one entrance. And then I'll walk along the gravel here right by the wall. I don't have to go through the wet grass. <clears throat> Ooh, can even go through here. How exciting. This is the main entrance. We're going in for art classes or to see the art gallery of Regina, which is in there. You'd go in that way. So there's the line of the creek again over there. Only bad thing about coming this way is you have to jaywalk over Elphinstone, but it's not so horrendously busy you can't find an opportunity to do so because the uh, crosswalk is up there half a block. But I want to get onto the north side of the creek, at least to start with, so. Once again, I've got a very crooked horizon. because it should be like. For some reason it doesn't want to be straight. I don't know how it decides. I think there's a software setting you can do, but I'm not sure how effective it is. I think after this car goes by, we can pass over. What is he doing? He pulled over, but he was signaling left. I don't know what that was all about. He's planning to do a U-turn. Anyway. Here's the bridge, Elphinstone Bridge. Now we're on the north side of the creek. Which is there before us in all its glory. Consider the lilies of the field. Ah, they grow. Consider the lilies of the field. Ah, they grow. They toil not, they toil not, they toil not. They toil not, neither do they weave. So, so I guess. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not a raid. There's a whole hymn there. Unfortunately, it's a call and response thing, and I can't do both parts. Anyway, there's of course just a Bible verse. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as one of these or them. Why did I think of that? Because I said, there's the creek in all its glory. That's why. <laughs> Everything's a song cue if you know enough songs, as I've often said. songs of one sort or another. A weird mixture really of hymns. hymns. Uh, most of my pop references would be from the 60s, 70s, 80s, somewhat into the 90s. And I'll just go this way. I haven't gone this way for a while. And uh, musical theater. So, oh and country, but classic country. Don't know recent country. Johnny Cash, people like that. I know a lot of that. Oh, and BTS. I know some BTS. <laughs> Not the Korean bits, but I recognize many of the songs.
Uh, let's go. I will stick to the Leopold Crescent here because I haven't really walked along it for a while. This is actually Garnet Street coming up, which connects to Leopold Crescent. Is that to my left or my right? To my left. So either I go on down to the right. I've gone that way more often, so let's go this way. <clears throat> right, it's garbage day. There's the garbage truck up there. Sometimes you see bunny rabbits in this little bit of park here. I won't cut through it again because of the wet grass, but just a green space. It's not you know, no park benches or anything, but green space is important. This is Leopold Crescent, to right over here. This is where the two come together, up there. <coughs> and we will go this way. And we can take the alley over to Angus Crescent, which is my crescent. Not my personal crescent, but the one on which we live. Is this an alley or is this a driveway? I can never remember. That's an alley. popping out there. Um, hmm, that's not a paved alley and it's been wet so I'll stick to the road. <coughs> Here's Angus Crescent. Some nice flowers. My wife's been in that house on the Davin Home School tour and it was one of her favorites. It's uh, bigger than it looks apparently on the inside. <clears throat> I'll walk down this side because you can't park on this side so you don't get cars every few feet. And once we get to Retallic down here, that'll be it for today's walk. the old Tommy Douglas house, former premier. That's an old one. actually quite large. Not particularly exciting from a design point of view, but large. Now this one is really cool. I've been in this one and it has this low front, but you see how high it goes in there. It's all open inside and then actually goes down as well. So it's this huge open space inside. Very cool design. It was for sale when we looked at it, but uh, we didn't buy it. because we have a house, <laughs> which we put a lot of money into at this point now. Renovations and more going on. Our deck is taking shape in the back. Eventually there'll be a hot tub for my increasingly aching bones, I guess, as I get older. That's a nice one over there too, that house. It's a big wraparound veranda, which I like. Here's the corner of Vital Lake and Angus. This is where we'll stop. How long was my walk? How green was my valley? Under 50 minutes. 
close to 50 minutes, so a bit shorter than sometimes, but just about right for this morning. It's nine o'clock. I still feel like I've got the whole morning ahead of me to do stuff. So we will stop here. Thanks for walking with me. I imagine I'll be back tomorrow and bye for now.